throughout this season, of course, since we started um, airing these sermons, we've been looking at how to live a Christian life. And, and, and Teacher Brian, you know, has, has, has been talking about quite a number of things. Uh, so today we are going to look at how to live this life. The things that we need to get rid of so that living this life can actually be easy. Because in li this life in itself is not easy. Living a, a Christian life, living a holy life amidst the impure world, it's, it's almost an impossible thing. But there's one thing that God has graced us with. As soon as you've given your life to Jesus, the Holy Spirit indwells you. And this Holy Spirit, his Holy Spirit, uh, is there to counsel you. He's there to, to advise you on various steps to take. Uh, but before that, uh, let's read from the book of Hebrews, chapter 12 from verse 1. It says, Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders uh, uh, and the sin that so easily entangles and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of faith. For the joy set before him, he endured the cross, uh, scorning its shame and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. So, uh, we are in a race. We are in a race, and we are almost seeing the finishing. We are almost seeing the finishing line. And there's one thing that we're being told. You know, in a race, if you've watched uh, people that are running, uh, the kind of clothes that they, they wear, those people are very light, even the shoes that they wear, uh, you know, things that can enable them to run faster. Uh, so in this uh, race called uh, life, there are things that we need to shake off. Uh, that uh, the things that can easily um, stop us from, from, from finishing this race well. Uh, one thing that is clear there is that as we are running, we need to focus on Jesus, who is the perfecter of our faith. So um, it's really not by our own self. Uh, it's really not by our own strength that we are able to live this life. But just as I mentioned, it's... Uh, because of the help that we receive from the Holy Spirit, who enables us to live this kind of life, who enables us to, to run this race uh, and, 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 and finish successfully. Uh, so the things that easily causes us not to, to run this race properly, uh, just to mention a few. Number one, today if you turn on the TV, or, or rather the movies that we watch, or even a magazine, reading a magazine, the first thing that you're going to see is sin, sin being advertised. Uh, and to be specific, uh, sex is being sold out there. That's the first thing you'll see. Uh, if, if, if they want to catch your eye, what they'll actually do is they will put some, some almost naked people there uh, so that they may be able to sell. I still wonder how this cooking oil called, you know, quite a number of cooking oils. Uh, you, you see a woman in bikini, you wonder how does someone in bikini, someone who is half naked, you know, how does it relate uh, with, with cooking, okay? So it is that way because that's the only way they can get to sell. That is what catches people. Uh, and these are the things that actually are causing us to not run this race properly. The things that we watch, the music that we listen to, the content that we take in. You cannot walk within Nairobi uh, area, especially the CBD area. You cannot walk 50 meters before seeing a billboard with, uh, with a very nice, you know, uh, advertisement of, of some cold beer, you know, uh, alcohol. Uh, and, and, and this makes it, you know, uh, this entices people. It's like it's pulling you into, into, into starting to take, you start taking drugs and before you know it, you're an addict. Uh, so, so what are the things that we really need to shake off? Uh, the things that desensitizes us, things that causes us to, to grow numb, you know, uh, because with the time, after having seen this kind of stuff, after having gone through uh, movies, videos that, that promotes drugs, sex, violence, uh, before you know it, you're actually behaving the same way. 
uh, that uh, the same way as, th I mean, the things that you're watching in the videos, the, the contents that you're taking in, sooner or later you start bringing them out. Uh, in, in computer they say that garbage in, garbage out. So number one, we really need to take uh, care of the things that we are, we are, we are, we are, we are taking in. Our, uh, for example, the movies that we are watching, the music that we are listening to, the books that we are reading. We need to be uh, careful with such because sooner or later, the language that we've read, the, the actions that we've seen, sooner or later we, we are found doing this stuff. Uh, and, and, and these things, one thing that they do is they desensitize us slowly by slowly. I can give you a couple of people in the Bible, but just to mention, David, David um, is mentioned as one of the greatest king that ever lived in Israel. David um, was a successful man. Actually, the Bible records David as the man after God's own heart. David had quite a number of stuff uh, that he struggled with. David grew up uh, fearing God, a young man who did everything that pleased God. God himself says that I have not found a man like David, a man after my own heart. But we'll wonder, you, you'll wonder what really happened. How did David end up to be who he was? How did he ended up doing what he did. Uh, David started by, you know, things that desensitizes you. Uh, number one, we, as we know in the Bible, is one man, one wife, okay? One, one, one man, one wife. Now, borrowing the cultures from, from, from within, from around him, David knew that the, if you marry from another place, actually you get to, to relate with them because that's what marriage, marriages does. They create relationship betwe between two families. They, they bring two families together. Uh, so David, before he knew it, he was, he was acting cold. He was acting cold. Uh, he was so desensitized to a, to, to, a, to a point where he, I think purity for him kind of was, was not something that he was now uh, fighting. To be pure, he wasn't fighting to be pure anymore. In other words, he he left. Uh, we say you've left down your guard. Uh, David did that. Another another thing that that happens to us that causes us to finish this race well is uh, rationalization. Rationalization. When you're trying to reason, uh, you're creating some 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 imagination in your head. We say that every good gift comes from God. Okay, every good gift comes from God. So you'll say that even taking these drugs uh, or rather watching things that are not, things that are making you happy, that, 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 that God will understand. I don't think that's true. That's not true. Uh, God wants us to, to concentrate, to set our minds on things above. He says the, the book of Colossians, uh, the letter to the Colossians say that, that we, set, uh, we should set our minds on things above and not on earthly things. So when we set our minds on earthly things, what happens is, um, little by little, we start to reason with, 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 uh, with God, okay? We are starting to reason with God. We say things like, um, if it is good for me, then God must have, you know, approved it. God must have approved it. God has given us in his word how to live a holy life, how to live a holy life. So there are things that we really need to, to shake off. Uh, number one is the things that slowly by slowly, uh, see as our conscience, you know, things that makes our heart grow cold, uh, desensitizes us, things that causes us not to view sin as serious as it is. Uh, sin is actually something that before God is like, is, uh, sin dethrones God. Sin is, it's like you're directly confronting God. It's you telling God that you're not afraid of his wrath, Sin is like you're telling God that uh, he doesn't know anything. You know better. It's like you're holding your fist against God's, uh, God's face. Uh, that's what sin does to us. And unfortunately, the things that we are watching, the things that we are listening to, uh, leads us to sin even more because they desensitize us to a point that sinning really doesn't, that is not bad, it, it depends. Like you can lie, I can lie. It only depends, you know, uh, on how or why, okay? Uh, if, if, if I lied to save someone's life, that, 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 that is good. We start rationalizing, we, sh we start reasoning with God. Uh, 
uh, if I lie to save uh, um, my family, that, that, that God will understand. Well, lying is bad. In one of the commandments, it says, do not lie. Uh, another thing that we also need to, to make sure that we, we get rid of is uh, the tendency to, uh, you know, not reading God's word. Uh, we, we, all, we often find ourselves ignoring the truth that he has set uh, for us, especially in his word. Um, there are things that we, we do as Christians. There are things that we do as Christians. Now, number one, I've mentioned desensitization. Number two, I've also mentioned uh, relaxation. And, and, and number three, um, allowing things, you know, allowing things that are not godly to enter um, our, our minds, you know. We talked about, you know, you see when you read Psalms 1, when you read Psalms 1, there are things that Psalm 1 uh, talked to us about, you know, a blessed person who doesn't walk in the counsel of the evil uh, or, or, or stand in the way of, of scoffers or sit in the seat. All those stuff. These are the things that we need to, 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 to let go of if we are to run this race. These are the things that hinders us from uh, finishing this race. Uh, now, if you've emptied yourself of this stuff, there are things that now you need to put in. For example, if, if, um, if you have a tin and you've placed it somewhere and it had water initially, if you remove the water from it and the tin is in the open, you need something to fill it so that the wind will not blow it away. So if you've taken things like uh, watching dirty stuff, listening to bad music, entertaining bad company. We need something to fill those spaces. And the only thing that fills these spaces are God's word, okay? When you read God's word, it guides you, it gives you counsel on how to, to run this, way, uh, this race properly. And one thing that he, uh, it has promised is that if you, if you read Philippians, it says that let us work out our salvation with fear and trembling uh, for for it is not, you know, for it is God who works in us both to will and to do. So everything that we are doing in, in, in our salvation work is actually something that God himself is the one who is enabling us to do. As I mentioned, the Holy Spirit that has been placed in you enables you to do this stuff. So once you've, 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 uh, you've filled in, and we will talk about this uh, a little more later, you, you, you've soaked yourself with God's word, um, you are now able to, you know, to leave it out. You're not now able to leave it out. Because just as I say, if you take something in, sooner or later you're going to take it out. So if you take God's word in, uh, you know, and the righteous way in, what comes out of you is, is, is nothing else but goodness. Goodness that you've read from God's word. Goodness that you've read from God's word. Another thing that we need to do is we need to put uh, hedges around us. We need to put hedges around us. Things that, um, things that protect us from the world, things that make sure that we do not fall into sin. For example, um, if I know personally that uh, taking alcohol is bad, okay, I cannot entertain, you know, company where people are taking alcohol. If I know that smoking is bad, then I want to separate myself from people who are smoking. If you're addicted and, and, and God is delivering you from that, then you need to keep off such kind of, of stuff. If you're struggling with immorality, you know that you're, you're, you're a womanizer. You cannot see a girl and let her go by. You cannot see a man and just you know, let him go by. What you need to do is you need to come up with some measures. And, and, and what, I know, what I thank God about is that he has given us the ability, you know, he's, he's enabled us through his Holy Spirit to, to know whenever we are faced with temptation, to know how we can find our way out. So, number one, you cannot be found in the same room with, with, with someone of the opposite sex. If you're struggling with, uh, with, uh, with purity, if you want to live a pure life, then you want to make sure that you, uh, you surround yourself with, with, with people. Because whenever you are alone, uh, then they say that uh, an idle mind is the devil's workshop. Uh, you'll find yourself logging into an... Um, these sites that are not godly, uh, thinking of stuff that are not godly, uh, and definitely you'll end up doing what you, 
you don't want to do. So you need to surround yourself, you need to put hedges around you, things that will keep you from sinning. Um, fellowshipping, prayer, and I said we'll talk about this, reading God's word, and, 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 and you know, uh, talking more about God to other people. This enables you to, again, be able to live a holy life. Because if you're talking about it, then you can live it out, okay? Uh, another thing that we need, we need, we need uh, accountability partners. We need accountability partners. Who, who are you accountable to? Do you have one person that you can, you can actually call any time and, and explain to them your deepest secret, your, 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 you, know, you know, the sin that, that you cannot air out? You know? Do you have that person that you can, you can show them your dirty linen, you can open your, your wardrobe and allow them to see the skeletons in your wardrobe? Do you have that person? Uh, we, need, we need accountability partners. We need people that can help us pray. Uh, we need people that we can pray with, people that can advise us. And most of the time, this kind of, uh, of, uh, of people, some call them mentors, uh, you need someone who is, is mature in, in, in salvation than you. Uh, his Christian life is one that he, you, can, you can say is mature than you. Uh, if, if, if he's an elder or, or, uh, or a friend, or a pastor, someone that you can open up to. Uh, we, need, we need such kind of people in our lives if you want to live this kind of life. Because these are the people that um, whenever you go wrong, they will not shy away from telling you that this you've done, brother, this is wrong. We need such kind of people, not people who will sugarcoat sin and tell you, no, it's okay. No, you need someone who will be true to you. Uh, another thing that we need to do, we need to take control of our mind, okay? We need to take control of what we are feeding our mind. Um, again, I think I've said this already, that if you, if you, if you, if you allow you know, evil stuff into your mind, uh, then everything that you'll be bringing out, out of yourself will be nothing but evil. So uh, brothers and sisters, uh, that, that will be it for today. Uh, what again, I'll encourage us, by maybe just rereading that verse again, he says, therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything. Let us take, you know, get rid of these things that can easily cause us not to, to run this race properly. Uh, take away hate, take away, take away um, malice, take away slandering, take away, you know, stealing stuff, um, lies, such kind of stuff. These are the things that causes us not to run this race the way God has uh, designed for us to run. He says, uh, verse 2, he says, fixing our eyes on Jesus, who is the pioneer and the perfecter of faith. You know? Uh, other vers versions will say, who is the founder and the perfecter of our faith. For the joy set before him endured the cross, um, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. So, uh, brothers and sisters, uh, that will be it uh, for today. Again, I'll encourage you, if you've not given your life to Christ, if you do not even know what this race is about, again, I'll, I'll, I'll encourage you to, to really give your life to Jesus Christ. Uh, if you've given your life to Jesus Christ before, and, and, and this race is not something that is happening, you know, in your life, uh, or rather you're trying to run, but there are quite a number of things that are pulling you down. I want to encourage you to, to fix your eyes on Jesus. He, he, uh, he, he did it before. He lived as a man on earth. And, and, and um, the life that he led while on earth is an example for us that we can actually do it through him. Thank you. Uh, see you again next Sunday. Shalom.